This is Edmund Abrams, and today we're going to put text on a path, which might not seem very interesting, but somebody asked me the other day, how do I put text on a circle? And then I was going to say something snarky like, well, you put text on a circle by putting text on a circle. Then I remembered, you know what, there was a time when I didn't know that that was an option in After Effects, and certainly I used Illustrator to do it and then import it for a while and felt really bad about myself. So I'll take you through some examples and some interesting things you can do with text and we'll try to recreate some things from here in the intro. Let's uh, get into After Effects and get on the path to good text animation. So inside of After Effects, make a new comp, okay, and then uh, type out some text. So you access the text tool by hitting uh, Control or Command T or clicking on the text thing up here or you can go new text layer or you know, whatever and uh, type out something that you care about and you can use the character and paragraph uh, windows over here to refine that now one of the things we're going to do next is we're going to make a new path and select the layer before you draw a path or else it'll make a new path not in that layer and you're actually making a mask in that layer so I'm going to use the pen tool basically what I want to do is create a nice a nice long path for the text to be displayed on and then we're going to create a loop of some kind and then uh, maybe another loop and we'll display another word and then that will be it so then we'll just uh, loop again and be off the screen so what I've created here is this funny loop-de-loop -loop type of thing which seems fine by me so the next thing to do is go into your text grab the text here grab the path options select the path which is mask one and now it'll stick the words to that path so that is pretty great and now you can go back and you can change the handles around and move these things if you feel you know they're in the wrong spot but as you can see what it's tried to do is cram the layer onto the center because our paragraph is on center aligned. Uh, I don't really care too much at this point um, because what we'll be doing is animating this thing on and we'll be using the path options to say where it is along the path. So you can change the first margin and the second margin in order to uh, move stuff around. So use these to position where you want the text to display at so when it slows down I want it to be here and then I want to adjust uh, this a little bit spread that out change it from metric to optical alright cool cool that looks good maybe I'll make this a little bit bigger even so that's good and in fact let's just move the whole thing up a little bit good stuff and uh, good so that's where whatever can come in now, how we're going to actually animate this thing along the path is using the animation tools. So we're just going to click Animate and Position. And if you've used this before, you know that Position will move things up, down, left, right, or 3D, whatever. Um, but in this case, it's relative to the path, so it's going to move it along the path or up and down relative to the path. So uh, we're going to move that position value to something like... Uh, minus 1400 that seems to do it uh, just because it pushes it off the frame I don't really care what the number is just push it off the frame and when we animate it on we're going to use the start here keyframe that move ahead uh, you know 20 frames or so and then set it to 100 so it's all on good stuff we want to animate it leaving so we're going to go animate position again to create a second animator and its position is going to push this thing into the curve so that's where its life will tragically end then uh, go down here into the range selector I'm going to use the end set a keyframe there so zoom in so we can see our keyframes a bit better and uh, yeah okay so this one lines up with that one go ahead a bit and then uh, set that down to zero and then just go into the advanced here and change it from add to subtract so now we've got that comes in and then it leaves and we don't want them both to be based on characters we want them based on lines so again go through these advanced settings and uh, make sure you change it to be based on lines or words because there's only one word but see whatever comes on and then it's going to leave 
in that fashion. And then on both of them, change the ease low up to 100%. Yep, ease low up to 100%. And then we'll have a nice smooth motion coming on and off. So that's all well and good, but we want to add to these animators, or at least to animator two in this case, we want to add a property at a scale. Now that scale, we want to change that down to uh, zero so that when it goes into the curve, it's actually going to shrink. So it's shrinking and disappearing. So now it's gone. So you've got something that you have animating on and then animating away. So that's cool. Uh, pretty much just what we wanted. Um, now I want a second one of these. So I'm going to duplicate that and uh, we'll call this one, call it words and uh, you know you can see that it uh, it's there but that's not where we want it we want to uh, position it using this first margin thing at a totally different part of the thing we want it to be there but uh, now it's upside down so that doesn't really work for us go back into the path options and use reverse path to switch it to the other side which means we also have to go back to the first margin here and uh, make sure that we do 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 find this damn thing again and uh, push it into the correct uh, position so let's see here there we go that seems about correct so that'll be good and now again we're going to have to alter uh, the two things that we put on as the animators because we want it to come out of the loop following us along so you know we don't want it to come from the opposite direction, unless you do, but I don't for this tutorial. So change uh, this to be a thousand here. So where does that come from? Yeah, that looks good. And then the other one is uh, now minus a thousand. So it's like the reverse is happening. And then uh, let's also add to animator one of the words thing here. We will add a scale and we'll scale it down to zero so it starts starts tiny and comes on and then disappears and alright that all looks good so we'll check it goes from there to there and goes from there to there so now we'll line them up so that it goes whatever and then words so that's pretty cool um, in and of itself but you know I promised I'd show you how to animate those lines so I might as well do that too there are a lot of cool things you can do with animating things on the path and really this is kinda of just the basics of doing that but let's uh, let's skip ahead and do some embellishing of stuff so um, and it's also important to know you can use closed paths as well you could use circles you could use rectangles you could anything anything that's a mask you can use that you can draw a mask in illustrator and bring it in and all that good stuff but let's take this mask so I'll hit M bring up the mask path copy it I'll go layer new get a new shape layer and then I will add a path to that and then twirl down and open up its path properties and then paste in there this wonderful shape um, you will also you'll notice now though that the shape is not actually aligned because the words should be right on that line so you need to line it up so what I do is I select one of the other layers pull up my rulers by control R or command R bring out some rulers onto uh, one of the points by just clicking and dragging from the margin it will go into this layer and then just grab grab its uh, path grab its handles and then move it right into where it needs to be boom perfect and then just go uh, view clear guides and then remove the rulers and it's perfect you need to add a stroke to this um, which will uh, give it something to look at so I'll just pump this up to like 32 perhaps to animate this on we're gonna go and add a trim paths to it and then in there you're gonna be changing either the start or end and uh, looks like it's the end that we want to change so go to the beginning set keyframe make sure end is at zero percent and then move ahead 20 frames and then I have no idea what to set this to but uh, uh, maybe like that cool yeah that'll do I think um, and then you know the word whatever 
it's going to fade away, but eventually we'll need to have something underline the word words. So come through like that. So weesh, weesh, and then uh, it'll go away, and then this will have to complete as well. So what we've got is this thing comes out, continues, and then words comes out, and then this thing continues on till its end. We also want to keyframe this thing coming off. So we're going to have to keyframe the start here to, uh, to be pick, basically picking itself up as it goes. So at this point, you know, it's still at zero, but um, by the time this thing gets here, it should have eaten, you know, most of its most of its tail. So wow. it comes in and like that. So now we'll end it out so that it ends with nothing on. Let's see. Oh, maybe we want to set a keyframe here. Actually let's just let's take this keyframe and move it up. So whatever words and now it's gone. So that looks pretty good. So let's look at these again. They both start at zero and then the end gets starts to pick up and then the start starts to eat the rest of it and then it's all gone. So next thing to do I would say is to take all of these and easy ease them and what we'll do is we'll take all of the end ones and then we'll take all of their key we'll take all of their keyframes and uh, move them kind of like this so they kind of shoot on and then shoot on to the next one like that and then we'll take all the start ones and move them in the opposite direction so they kind of lag behind but they eventually catch up kind of like that so that's kind of neat you know it's not terrible um, and one of the last things we need to do is we need to take this path and we need to change its stroke so that it has dashes. So just add them here under the stroke, add the dashes, change it up to like 60, and that's pretty neat. And this creates a very interesting character in uh, how the stuff looks and moves around. You know, I kinda, I rather like it, so, you know, we're gonna use that. Now, we also added a bunch of flourishy, embellishy, extra bits that were kinda flying off of this thing and we could use those to create interesting designs. So if you want to draw in some of those, it's pretty much the same process, right? You just take your pen tool, you know, find a spot where you want to add some of those. And I'd like to add some here that kind of come off of, come off of here. So you draw a tangent and then, uh, you know, some more other lines. And do do, so I'll do one like that. Um, let's see, make sure you deselect in between each one you make. Um, I like one that comes off like this. That's pretty brutal. That, yeah, that one didn't really work out. It's really, really lazily done. Okay, that looks all right. Uh, I'm trying to think if there are any others. But anyway, those will do. And then what you want to do is you want to find where those are appropriate to start. So, let's see. Probably right here, this one can start. And then right here is where this one can start. And again, we're going to do the trim paths thing, but let's go into this layer here. You know, you, you. Let's grab its trim paths and just copy it and paste that on there. So, wow. We'll just go in, and then we know that, you know, just so we already have some keyframes to work with in here. We would like to move uh, this keyframe here. We like to move this one up here, so that uh, what we've got going on is at the beginning they're both at zero, and then at the end they're both at a hundred. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the graph editor and use this to uh, pull this in the direction I want, and then go to the start here. And then we're going to edit this to pull that in the direction I want. And that looks pretty cool when it comes on. So, you know, all's well. Got one of those. So now take the trim paths off of this and then stick it onto here on the other one. But make sure your playhead is at the start. 
stick it there. Woo, so now it's got one. Sweet. You know, maybe you want to go in here and you want to, you know, give them some dashes, you know, so that they're at least the same sort of thing. Maybe you want to make them a little bit thinner in their stroke, you know, just to make sure that everything is, is cool. And then just to, you know, play around with it and uh, have fun is really the big thing. You want to really use your design abilities if you have any. If you don't, don't worry, it comes with time and uh, practice and all that stuff. As you can see, you know, my design abilities are really lacking on this particular tutorial, but, uh, you know, I'm sure I could have come up with something way better if I had, like, time. That could have been cool, but, uh, yeah, at least this first part is not terrible, you know? It looks like it's throwing up stuff all over the place, so... This is the kind of thing that you have created, where lines come on, text comes on, everything moves around. Uh, one of the things I'll show you here, though, real quickly, is how I styled it at the end. Is uh, I took them all, and then I pre-composed them all, and then I applied a roughen edges to it, which, you know, roughens the edges. And really, you can just tone down with your roughen edges sometimes. It doesn't have to be super crazy. And then uh, I think I applied like a like a noise to it, noise HLS, and uh, just threw in like uh, 5% on each of those just to make it a little bit noisy, and that was it. So it gives you kind of this hand-drawn look. Then you can go in into the evolution options here, and then uh, you can put in something like uh, time times 25 so that it has something new and different uh, as its random seed as it uh, goes along but uh, you get the idea that's how to make it look kind of kind of fancy a little hand drawn but uh, yeah that's about it that's how we made the intro to this thing uh, hopefully you learned a lot about animating paths and animating text on paths and uh, hopefully that serves you well I'm Evan Abrams uh, comment rate subscribe hopefully you liked this this is gonna be a new one every week and uh, We'll all learn how to do awesome things in After Effects. And uh, follow me on Twitter and join the Facebook page because I'm posting about uh, motion graphic stuff all the time on there now. And uh, hopefully you get involved with the channel. And if you ever have questions, ask me whatever, whether it's about After Effects or my excellent beard growth, whatever you need, I suppose, as long as it's not weird and I have time. So subscribe to the channel. It's going to be new stuff. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.